Welcome back, guys, to True Testimony Unveiled YouTube. Today, I have a serious, serious prophetic word for you guys. I know the whole entire remnant in all the levels of Jesus Christ has been going through so much suffering and reshaping and such an emotional toll. And I know that you've been brought to a place where you just ask the Lord, why? Why are you going through this? I love you. I know that I hate you. And I still don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. And I'm here to tell you that the Lord has sent a word. The Holy Spirit has really been busy with us. And it's all a really, really good reason. So do me a favor. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> Kick it. Let me introduce you uh -huh. to the cutting edge. Uh -huh. So precious and potent, it's the reason Jesus bled. Same thing that David was sipping uh -huh. when he danced up out of them clothes. All the pious men don't start tripping. These aren't drunk as you suppose. Oh, I took one sip, now the air I breathe. And every little song I sing is filled to the brim with the brew of eternity flowing from the heart of the king. If you were wondering what's the dealio, why I gotta scream so loud? It happens when I visit El Elyon's house. And once you check in, you can't ever check out. All right, guys, so down to business. Um, everything that we've been feeling, the remnant, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, Yahweh, the Holy Spirit has really been ministering to me the why. So originally, I was selected in uh, my women's ministry where I'm on a, the administration team called uh, Sisters in Divine Alignment. Um, and Shout out to all my sisters if you're watching. However, I was selected to deliver a word this past Friday on our evening Bible study. Please forgive me if you, forgive me if you hear my son in the background. He's upstairs, but he's so loud that you can hear him. <laughs> um, so anyways, I was selected to give a word. And I, I usually know when the Lord is going to pick me, when my turn is going to come about, where I have to deliver a word. And please excuse me, I'm monitoring two screens. When I was selected to deliver this word, I had already been studying in my personal time, um, the book of Nehemiah. And prior to that, I was studying... Um, I know I was studying the book of Acts, I was studying Nehemiah, the book of Mark. So the Holy Spirit has been preparing me for this word for some time, because anything that he ordained you to release messages on, you're going to go through it yourself, because you have to understand the reshaping of the very meaning of what it means to die daily. You can't minister something to someone if you yourself haven't been through it to understand the why, why the Holy Spirit uh, allowed us to go through it, why it's important for others to understand that, A, he loves us through this training and conditioning, and more importantly, why his principles are the way they are. So many people uh, love God, but they don't understand his, his spirit. The remnant we have been through so much lately emotionally because we are obedient you know like the older child compared to the younger child the younger child is in a position where they will submit to what mommy and daddy has to say because they the youngest and they love mommy so the older child will be more in the opposition position um to what mommy and daddy has to say so in the holy spirit reshaping us which we all are aware that we go through a form of conditioning first now in the conditioning we go through suffering and all of this leads up to the uh word that the holy spirit has released me to build 
sorry, has released me to mention to you guys about the rebuilding of Jerusalem. As we all know, Jerusalem means city of peace. Our peace has been disturbed. Our emotions has been disturbed through the adversary, yes. But why did God allow it to happen? And I'm going to get to that point. But you have to understand. Um, God does not rush because he has no reason to rush. Um, he's the creator. He's the, begin, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. So he has no reason to rush. And the reason why I'm saying this is because originally he started me off with reading Nehemiah in my personal time. But in order for you to truly, truly understand God's point in the book of Nehemiah, you have to understand the book of Ezra. You have to read Ezra, which is the book right before Nehemiah. You have to read that book. Why, Jessica? Because if you only read Nehemiah, then you won't understand God's teaching in that book of Nehemiah. Um. So as I read Nehemiah, I was began to understand um, Nehemiah, he was a cupbearer. And to be a cupbearer, you have to be trusted by the king, especially in the culture that day. Because you had to taste the food before he ate it. You had to pick out his food. You had to pick out his wine. You were a trustee. You were the trustee, almost like the bestie, because you had to keep your trustee close in moments of um, advice and et cetera. You would have your trustee near you. However, the majesty and the royalty of the king is supposed to be so spectacular and so wonderful with his essence and his aura that when he walks in a room, he changes your mood. He changes your uh, perspective in life. It's like you are blessed to be in the presence of the king. Now, the same way we feel about God and the Holy Spirit. However, Nehemiah, he um, was brought into a great suffering on this day where he was sad. He actually had received word that Jerusalem, the walls of Jerusalem, and that the people that was returned from exile, that they were going through so much and they were beaten down and broken down. And, you know, there was basically like a breach in the peace in Jerusalem. So Nehemiah wanted to go and to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem. Now, we already know the story, the just of the story. We should all know the basis and the just of the story of Nehemiah when he wanted to rebuild the wall and he was um, met with so much opposition, so much against him, um, trying to stop him from building a wall, so much that he went through. But you have to first understand when reading Nehemiah, right, that Nehemiah, um, he, number one, risked his life by even asking the king, could he go and rebuild the wall in Jerusalem? Because number one, back in Exodus, which is another reason why you, you have to read the book Exodus, um, he already said that all projects in Jerusalem had to cease. There were no more of the building in the projects in Jerusalem. Like he already mentioned that. And number one, you know, the, that was the Persians, you know, where Nehemiah was with the king, it was the Persians. And then Jerusalem, you know, it's the Christians. They pretty much, well, the Israelites, they go to spirit, but they were, they were not seeing eye to eye, you know, they were almost like enemies, they were enemies, so, um, if Nehemiah had asked for permission to go back and build the wall in Jerusalem, it, he, the king could have easily been like, off with your head, even though you're my best friend, even though you're my cup bearer, off with your head, you shouldn't ask me that, you know what I mean, and even so, with him even asking him with a spirit of sadness, Meaning, if you read the book of Nehemiah, um, chapter 2, verse 3, Nehemiah was really sad when he asked the king, and the king noticed his um, sorrow, and he's like, well, what's wrong with you, because you ain't sick. And the reason why the text was written the way it was is because in the culture back in that day, you could not be sad in front of the presence of the king, because the king is majesty. So... Trying to keep it all together, make it short, because I'm long-winded. <laughs> um, Nehemiah got his approval. Overall, Nehemiah got his approval. He waited four months from the time he was notified about the condition Jerusalem was in, up until the time that he actually asked the king, could he go and do it and give him authority and all the necessities that he needed. It was a four-month wait. And in that four months that Nehemiah waited to ask the king, um, 
Nehemiah prayed to God. He prayed to God to touch the king's heart on that night when he asked him so that things could be ruled in his favor. So Nehemiah went to build the wall. Now, of course, as I mentioned, Nehemiah faced so much opposition. He had helpers. He had the necessities that he needed, the materials and stuff to build the wall. When he got there, he um, inspected the wall and he did it at night because there were a lot of people that were actually against um what Nehemiah was doing, they were against just pretty much all the things that God stands for, the Holy Spirit stands for. And Nehemiah wanted to do it at night because he didn't want any interruptions and et cetera, et cetera. You know, the locals, they weren't on the same, how we say, vibe as uh, most Israelites. They weren't on the same vibe. They didn't feel and flow how most followers of Jesus, how most followers of Yahweh, you know, Jehovah God, like the holiness in his spirit. They they weren't big on that. They were so big on having a negative outlook on life, meaning, um, you know, this is the way things is, I would call it pe pessimistic. This is the way things is. This is life, you know, what you doing, uh, you know. Oh, you saying that? You doing, really? You, you know how people have those type of attitudes where they only believe things that they can see. They go off of um, the ways that they already are and what they already know. They're not open. They're not open and submissive to change, to improvement. So um, Nehemiah knew that he would have an issue. So he inspected the wall at night. One wall that was broken. Um, when he was, shall I say, when he was inspecting the broken walls, and the damage to the walls. He noticed one portion of the wall already had, um, how can I say, it already had issues or it was already breached pre-exilistic, it says. So pre-exilistic, so before the exile, before the captivity of Jerusalem, before the captivity of Israel, um, the Israelites, um, the wall already had a breach. So he realized that some of the issues was already, um, like I said, before the exile. So it was an inside job. If you really have to be like a, a, a Bible bookworm <laughs> to understand this, understand it because in that text, you will understand that it was an inside job when you understand the directions and the text chosen as Nehemiah examined the wall. Um, because I didn't understand. I had to dig, dig, dig. And what I mean by dig, I had to do Bible study. I had to do um, purchase study Bibles, different versions of the Bible to read um, the breakdown. But Nehemiah realized it was an inside job. And I'm going to get back to that. Now, we already know Nehemiah, what he did was to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Now back in Exodus, what they did was um, they rebuild the temple of God. They rebuild the Torah, which is the Bible. They rebuild the Torah in the community, right? And they also rebuild the temple, the Torah, and... Nehemiah did the city wall. So those were the three. In Exodus, it was a temple, the Torah, and the community. And then for Nehemiah, it was the city walls, right? So this is why you have to understand um, both books has to be read in order to truly understand God's point. The whole entire story of Exodus and Nehemiah is the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. It's the rebuilding of the kingdom. It's the rebuilding of the church. Now, the reason why, um, if you observe, which I have something for you to observe, and it, I like to do show and tell sometimes, but as you can see here, right, every single thing that they faced, every single thing, breaking it down chapter per chapter from Exodus and Nehemiah, all of their attempts on rebuilding the church had opposition. 
the return of everyone from exile, you know, the remnant was left, which is all the people who, ex the remnant is the leftover, the beat down, people that go through so much strife and struggle, they, they survive captivity. They survive captivity. And that's what we are pretty much going through now because you can't teach something that you haven't been through yourself. You can't preach something that you haven't been through yourself. But each one of these boxes um, illustrates the breakdown for every opposition that they faced in um, Exodus and Nehemiah. And the reason why I've showed you this text is because you have to understand, right? Why we are going through the suffering. We're going through the suffering because we, as the people, we like to do things our way. We say, this is what God is asking of us. This is what God is asking of us. This is who we believe God is. We love God, right? We know these things, right? We know these things. We know these things, and I'm not doubting it. And trust and believe, God doesn't doubt it either. However, right, this is what the Holy Spirit has ministered to me to tell to you. In the story of Ex Ezra and Nehemiah, they did succeed in building the temple, the Torah in the community, and the city walls. They were successful. But the problem is the main goal behind the whole entire story is to strengthen, is to obtain, maintain, and strengthen their covenant with God. But they were not successful in the transition in their spirit. They were not. In the end of Nehemiah, they were uh, set up. They set up a marketplace. They set up a marketplace outside of the wall of Jerusalem. Um, they were working on Sabbath. They had people working inside the temple who were not qualified. They were sleeping on a job. It was so many things going on where there wasn't the order of God was not involved. Um, the beginning of Nehemiah, Nehemiah risked his life by asking the king to even go and build Jerusalem. By the end of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was punching people in their face and pulling out their hair and screaming, Obey the Torah! He prayed to God and he said, Listen, I tried. Please remember me, Heavenly Father, when I get to heaven. I try. The remnant is brought to this so much in our lives because we, A, try to help people. B, we try to understand the spirit of God. C, um, we move too fast. We move too fast. It's a lot that goes on. But we, we must really slow down and trust God. God says that the why we are going through this is because we must go through conditioning, which in conditioning, it involves suffering. It involves um, reshaping, reforming, dying daily, right? Because all of these things um, is a split example of being reborn. It's the part where our flesh fights with the Holy Spirit that is being magnified inside of us. So you go through a lot of strife. You go through a lot of sometimes depression. You go through anxiety. Um, and we all know anxiety is a spirit and it does not belong to us and neither is depression. But when you fight what God is doing inside of you, then you open your spirit to unclean spirits. And then this is when the enemy comes and he try to infiltrate you with familiar spirits or he try to infiltrate you with um, anxiety or depression or doubt. All things that come up against your faith and believing that God will do what he said that he was going to do. Why are you going through strife? Because we have to really truly learn who we are in God, who God has built us to be, who God has created us to be. We have to truly be submissive to where God is taking us and not how we label what God wants to do with us. 
a lot of us like to say, you know, well, I know God, I know the Holy Spirit, you know, he forgives me for my sins. I know Jesus, Jesus forgives me for my sins. Right, Jesus made it so when we mess up, we're able to be forgiven. It wasn't always like that. But we have to be washed. And the God that we serve is holy. And it's not to say it's going to happen overnight, but that's when you go through conditioning. And once you submit and fully surrender to God, um, and this is just a process that I'm explaining, because there's a second part to this prophecy being delivered. Um, this is the why. I'm explaining the why. Once you fully surrender to God, you understand why the suffering was needed. You understand why the reshaping and the magnification that you went through was needed. The nights you cried, the nights you couldn't sleep, the nights you stayed up all night, the nights that um, you really questioned what's your purpose. All of those things were allowed for you to endure were because you had to learn to surrender. You had to understand that it's not who you think you are in God, but it's who God says you are in him. And that requires full dependency on the Holy Spirit. So what does that mean, Jessica? In your own strength, in your own strength, you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to meet the mark of where God is trying to take you in your own strength. You must be fully surrendered, which means you have to be brought to a position of humility. You have to be stripped, stripped of every garment that you have. You have to be stripped. Do everybody have to be stripped? No, but this message will, I have to explain the why to, you have to be stripped because sometimes our pride get in the way, our ego, even our wisdom that God has granted us with, sometimes the enemy even use that against us. So you have to be put in a position of humility and being humble with who you are in God to continue to go forward and move forward in God. Now, I like him to think, and I feel in my spirit that whom this message is for, you are coming out. Like, I can cry because I'm going through this as well. You are coming out of that reshaping. You are coming out of that conditioning. You have received the spirit of Holy Spirit of God. And where he was trying to get you to see. You received your humility in its purest form. Because you can be humble. Your humility can be active, but it's not pure. What does that mean? This is purity. Straight up and clean. It's straight clean. What does that look like with our spirit? When we get to a position to say, what is it that you want from me, Father God? What is it that you want from me? What is it that you're trying to tell me? And I'm sorry, sisters and brothers, it comes with a lot of tears. Because in those tears, you are brought through stages of healing and as you heal you are only then able to receive your next step why is that because just like in the book of Exodus and nehemiah they fought they worshiped they read the bible they even started violating the scriptures they started to violate the scriptures you know they fought so hard within their own strength to rebuild the temple and the church of God. And they did it. They managed to do it. But in the end, spiritually, they were not completely reborn. Just like the 10 people with um, ten people with the skin disease, uh, leopards, the leprosy. 
10 people with leprosy, only one came back. And I read um, in the book that only that one in the, in the Holy Spirit, sorry, my son interrupted me. I read in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Bible, that only the one was made whole through the Holy Spirit. The nine were healed, but only one was actually made whole. God don't want us to have to keep repeating these cycles. He want us to be made whole now. The second portion of this prophecy is God has released us. He has released us. A lot of us um, understand what we've been through, understand that our testimony is our ministry. We understand that those are the very same people that we are seeing around us and the choices they make and the things that they do. Those people that we are eager to plant seeds to. Even those platforms that God is unctioning us to go ahead and to go forward in. He's given us the green light. Because you had to go through a reshaping and to be made whole. To understand who God's spirit is. Before you can go forward with who you think God has created you to be. Notice there's two different things. Who God's spirit is and who you thought God created you to be. Those are two different ball games. Through our conditioning and our suffering that we all went through, it was all for the reshaping of who God created us to be. And after the conditioning, you have your training. When you get hands-on experience, so I believe a lot of you are already in training where you're starting to have, how they say, you're starting to be places with people, situations, things, observing things, witnessing things. And you're like, wait a minute, something is not right. You know, these people, they are not submitted to God like they should be. Or you're, you're praying for them harder and harder and you're fasting for them harder and harder. Because they are not in this level of submission to where you know God requires us to be. And none of us are perfect. All of us still learn. But there's levels. Um, God just may be calling you to lay a seed in their lives. And one thing that God unctioned to me tonight. In the situation is one or two things. Either a problem or a solution. There's no in between. Are you a part of the problem or are you a part of the solution? Anything, any decisions you have to make, there's a problem and there's a solution. God is always operating in the solution. The problem with the story of Ezra and Nehemiah is their hearts, their hearts were not new. You know how in the Bible it tells us the hearts can't be rebuilt. It has to be a new heart. All things must be made new. The only way that it can be made new it's through the Holy Spirit. And that is where we've reached. Through a point of humility, submission, humbleness to the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit has reshaped us. We have allowed him to do what it is that God does. So I really hope that this message resonates with you all. Um, I will leave breakdowns in scripture in the description box through the story so you as you read through the story you understand um i will let you see this image again and i will also list it down below but it is important for us to understand who god has created us to be and the point is they went through so much to rebuild. They went through so much to rebuild. Years and years and years of rebuilding for things not to be the way the Holy Spirit intended. So therefore, right, more work had to be done. So much more work had to be done because they were not in full submission to the Holy Spirit. They rebuild in their own strength they rebuild 
in their own wisdom, in their own knowledge, they were not waiting hand and foot on the Holy Spirit, asking, what can I do for you today? Um, what has you released me to do? They didn't understand that there's seasons. You know, there's a seed to sow, and there's a seed to harvest. There's seasons in God. They didn't understand the shift. There was some things that they missed. They worshiped. They read the Bible. They wound up violating the Bible. You have to be in a position in your life where you are not going to uh, allow things to go smoothly if the Bible is being violated. You are not going to live. You are not going to live by the ways of the world. You're not going to be one foot in and one foot out. You are going to literally be in the spirit 24-7 operating. And even I've been in the spirit, but there were still some things I had to learn. A lot of us still have to learn. But at least now, God is telling us to go forward. You have enough knowledge now to go forward with what he's calling you to do. You have enough knowledge now to go forward where he is operating the conditioning inside of you. So I just really am grateful because through the reshaping, we go through so much suffering, it's easy to give up. I encourage you not to give up. I encourage you to be fully dependent on the Holy Spirit. And everything that you do, your attitude, what you say, what you do, what you think, what you believe, the friends you have, the job you go to, the car you drive, your finances, your bills. Learn to be more dependent on the Lord. Nothing comes before him. Nothing. There's a lot that we must learn, but you don't have to do it alone. I invite you to join us in our empowerment groups on Facebook. The description will be listed below. I invite you to tune into True Testimony Unveiled Radio, um, where I elaborate more about the things of God, where God has te- taught me and those alike, you know, the people he put me in. Um, how can I say? those who seek his face the way I do my covenants my kingdom covenants we all have things to talk about about God all the time and if you do I encourage you to comment below and leave your email address and I'll email you but we all have to move forward guys and who God created us to be we have to do it fully leaning on the Holy Spirit with the strength of God there's a lot of times we brought through things and we're like listen it had to be God that brought me through that. Because let me tell you, I don't know how I would have got through it. That's the place that God wants us to be. Because he deserves all the glory. He is more than worthy to be praised. If you want notifications for the next time that I am live, all you have to do is text. Um, yeah. Deliver me. Jesus. Deliver me, Jesus. No spaces. Deliver me, Jesus. To 94090. That will also be in the description box below. Um, I thank you. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. But just understand, guys, that we are being released to go forward in who God has uh, ordained us to minister to. You are now aware by now who that is and the sins that we deal with from which they are the sins that we've dealt with always remember guys i love you with the love of jesus christ and that the god we serve is holy thank you guys stay encouraged god bless shalom hold up hold up hold up don't go away just yet i got something to show you in your system Gonna be the reason that it all goes wrong I'm gonna be a glitch in your system Standing for my savior when it all goes down When it all goes down, down, down When it all goes down, down, down (laughs) 
Do you wanna be? Darkness scatters and the dark ones they will realize Illuminati pull the shades over the people's eyes Cover one and you'll be covered, that's the devil's lies Shooting star then shut up star, that's a sacrifice Do you ever wonder, do you ever scrutinize? Asking questions till the day I die, yeah Do you ever wonder, you should always scrutinize? Asking questions till the day I die a system Gonna be the reason that it all goes wrong I'm gonna be a glitch in your system Standing for my savior when it all goes down When it all goes down, down, down When it all goes down, down, down Can you hear the trumpets blast as my Jesus comes? Step into the light and you will see that he's the one Rolling out to see the clouds party cracks the sky Watching the...